<cười> xin chào các bạn tôi tên là Charles à, một người nước ngoài hiện đang sống Sài Gòn à, năm nay đã sớm ở Việt Nam hơn 5 năm rồi đạt được uh, chứng chỉ tiếng Việt nâng cao ở bên đại học xã hội nhân văn mình nghĩ là nói chung mình là một tổng thay mà nói tiếng Việt ghê gớm rồi thì uh, nên làm một cái video để giúp mấy ông khác học bởi vì nếu mà họ đi lại Việt Nam thì họ nên nói tiếng Việt có tiếng Anh đi chẳng quá yeah. Hi guys, my name is Alec and today we're going to introduce the six Vietnamese terms um, and we're going to concentrate mostly on the five moving tones but we'll begin by introducing the even tones um, so the first tone is an even tone, and it's important to remember that the vocal register is a little above the normal speaking register for English. So if you notice my voice now, when I do the even tone, it's actually fairly high for English speaker. Um, so the even tone is called ngang, uh, and this is also a sort of phonetically difficult word for English speakers to pronounce because it begins with the NG. Um, so we have NG at the end of the word, but not at the beginning of the word, and this can be difficult. Now, if you say an N normally, you notice that the tip of your tongue touches the roof of your mouth. You try. Now, when you say NG, actually the back of your tongue touches the roof of your mouth. So, kind of like if you said singer, and then you said inger, and then you just said ngur, and you'd get that ng. But remember, ng and ny are different, so careful with that. So, ngang is the even tone. And again, you notice it's kind of high. Ngang. Um, now we move into the five moving tones. And again, um, we'll look at an example after of one word with six different completely independent meanings dependent on the tone. Um, and so it's very important that you say the tone correctly or you may just be saying an entirely different word. Now each of the six moving tones has a diacritic mark which also shows you what the tone is. There are some other marks in Vietnamese like this moon hat and flipdinger thing which we'll explain later. Um, those are vowels, not tones. For now we're just worried about the uh, six tones. So um, the first moving tone is the rising tone. Um, and now each of these tones has a name, the name has a meaning, and the meaning is also associated with that tone. So we're going to learn the tones by learning the names of the tones, and that's how we're going to practice them. So the first tone is called yo sac. Um, and again, it's a pretty steep increase. I emphasize it a lot there, but uh, it's a lot higher rising tone than Mandarin Chinese. So sac means sharp. You notice it's an up mark and the tone goes up. That's pretty easy to remember. So we got sack. <laughs> Second tone is the falling tone. Um, it means dark or mysterious, uh, although it's a bound morphine, so it doesn't have the meaning on its own. But if you said top huyen, that would mean your black hair. Um, and if you said huyen yu, that would mean the mystery of mysteries, like in the Tao Te Ching or something. So. Huyen um, is the falling tone, and you can see that it goes down. Um, okay, so those are the first three tones. Then we have the next tone is the question tone, which is easy to remember because it's represented by a sort of question mark. Uh, and it, the word is the verb for ask in Vietnamese. So, hoi. Now this is where we start to get into some differences between Northern and Southern Vietnamese. In Northern Vietnamese, um, the tone would, well, uh, we'll start with Southern, because I know Southern, but I would So, this is, <laughs> um, so Southern Vietnamese, you would dip down and then rise up, like, hoi. But in Northern Vietnamese, you'd actually rise up and then dip down, like, hoi. So a little difference there, and that can be hard. And Central Vietnamese, of course, is even different, but we won't worry about that today. Then we have the two glottal stop tones. These also can be difficult for English native speakers. The first is ngã, again with the ng at the beginning of the word. So be careful because ngã and nhã are different. Um, so ngã means fall down or intersection, like ngã is a four-way intersection. Um, so 
this is a glottal stop tone that kind of goes um, in a similar fashion to the um, question tone, but you get this kind of break so that it goes nah, ah, nah, ah, and we're looking at this diagram. So, <laughs> the northerners pronounce the glottal stop very clearly, whereas the southerners kind of cut it off. So for the southern accent, it sounds very similar to hoi, and actually they themselves would often confuse this even in writing. Um, so, it's like hoi, and then nga, and it goes a little bit higher. That can be difficult. Um, and finally, we have the heavy tone, nang, which is the dot. Um, and that one is kind of a falling glottal stop, nang. Also in the south, they don't really pronounce the nang glottal stop. They just kind of go nang. But again, it falls down further than huyen, so it's still a little bit different. So the different accents can lead to different confusions. Um, but for now, let's practice saying the five moving tones. So, repeat after me. Shak huyen hoi nga nang. Shak huyen. Hoi nga nang. Sak huyen hoi nga nang. We should get the synthesis. Sak huyen pow hoi nga And more to come. Um, <clears throat> next time we're going to take a look at the numbers. Uh, and this will be a great chance to practice your tones because um, the numbers include all tones except for nga.